So, uh, before we actually get into today's topic which is you know how do you design a pitch. So, this is what we said yesterday or rather last class that we will do be, you know uh, the show and tell that you have to do uh, tomorrow between 2 pm and 5 pm uh, in room number 317 in the Monash building right. Uh, the idea is not to take any PPT nothing right you just have to tell what you have done ok so far uh, because 3rd November is when you have your final presentation. So, the idea is not to have everything stacked up there um, just tell what you framed as challenge whom you interviewed if you did anything uh, even your thermocall stuff is ok take it there yeah um, feedback you got and any learning that you got from this feedback what would you do next. So, all failed experiments right that is ok too it is ok to say that look we would we took uh, the the last class there were some failed experiments people presented right uh, that is also fine. So, please go and you are saying that is 10 out of your 30 up for this project yeah. So, any questions on this just show and tell. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, right. And uh, the, your question was, do I have to have a business model? So one of the questions was, do do we need to have a business model which is validated? The answer is no. It's okay if your idea is at an early stage of validations and you don't still know how you will make money. That's fine too. You might have some options. You might do it this way. Might do it, but if you're not validated, that's fine. Yeah. So it's not necessary that you have to have a a validated business model ki kaise paise how will you make profit it is ok you know some of them may have clarity some of them may not have it is ok I do not think that is so yeah sometimes it is take much longer to actually know where the money will come from it is ok. Um, ok so um, all right let me then get into this. So, this is a play that I watched in uh, in Bangalore uh, it is a play which is called Picasso at Lapina Jai. So, it is a fictional play there is a guy Steve Martin then father of the bride he has written this play and um, there is a scene. So, it is a play where Einstein meets Picasso in a bar in Paris and uh, there is a discussion which is happening between the bartender and Einstein and she is saying you know order for your book he is just written this is 1904 he is just written written special theory of relativity paper and she is asking in order for your book to have an impact how many people have you should read your book and this guy says only one max and she says only one max what do you think is a why 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 would he say that any idea any guess why would einstein say that only one max is enough to read his paper any guess any physics guys who can tell the answer. So, uh, it turns out that essentially there was only one guy um, who actually read his paper which was Max Planck ok. But then this one one guy was enough to uh, publicize about him and that is the role we called a champion if you do not find a Max Planck kind of guy you does not matter what you publish you know. So, um, so that is the uh, that is the point. So, either your idea finds a champion or dies that is the principle. Um, there is a play I watched I think couple of months back in Bangalore called uh, the square root of a sonnet. It was based on this life of our S Chandra Shekhar another Nobel laureate um, of Indian origin and his relationship with his advisor which is whose name is Eddington. And this guy traveled um, on a ship from Bombay to uh, UK and he had this idea of the mass of a star beyond which it starts collapsing 1.44 times the mass of sun that is eventually the mass where you start building black hole. And this advisor basically just smashed him uh, his idea he says your idea uh, is he just thrashed his idea that time. He says your idea has a fundamental conceptual error in front of all the uh, Royal Ac Academy of Astronomy people. 
this guy felt really humiliated and the idea sort of got dumped for 30 years <laughs> he didn't do he didn't work on that idea for 30 years after which he started working for which he got a nobel so if you don't find a champion it takes really really long time for an idea to, to survive and um, so these are two guys who had this uh, hypothesis that ulcers are caused by bacteria and nobody was ready to listen to them because they didn't come from top universities so eventually what they did was you know does anybody know the story they got nobel eventually but for a long time just nobody was ready to listen to their idea so they just drank the liquid themselves they drank the bacteria themselves and then demonstrated that they are the, it's causing ulcers yeah <laughs> so it's a it's a very strange experiment but that slowly started uh, people started looking at what they're saying so innovators goal initial initial goal is to just find a champion i mean investor is one type of a champion but somebody who can actually market your product also is another type of champion okay there can be all kinds of champions that's the reason you have to pitch you have to pitch again and again so um, why is making a good pitch hard now this is little bit of theory and we'll get into uh, templates okay why do you think making a good pitch is hard there's some fundamental uh, challenges any idea why would making a good pitch be hard from guesses no guess okay um, so there's a villain in the story uh, and I want to just highlight what uh, that villain is um, so this is an experiment called tappers and listeners which is outcome of a PhD from Stanford in psychology uh, Elizabeth Newton and uh, her experiment was very simple she would uh, have two people one set of people is tappers they would just tap they would tap they would tap a song a song which is very popular kind of thing and they would have listeners who would listen to the song and their job was to recognize the song yeah and the, the song that was tapped was supposed to be a jingle which is very very common what what do you think was the percentage of people which recognize the song correctly any guess how what percentage of people recognized the listeners recognize the song from the tapping 90 percent 20 percent so the answer, the, the answer was like 2.5 percent okay and that's not what she got her phd for but she also asked the tappers what do you think would be the percentage of people recognizing and they said 50 percent okay so basically they were saying you stupid guys you can't even recognize such a simple thing and why do you think that's the case why do you think so many people are not able to recognize what do you think is the reason why is it so hard to recognize the song any guess any guess we are going to we are getting into something which is very i mean you have some fundamental principles in physics and everything we are one fundamental principle here very very fundamental okay no guess so tappers overestimate because of curse of knowledge okay what is the curse of knowledge once we know something we find it hard to imagine what it was like not to know it basically the song is humming in the tapper's head and when the song is humming in your head it is extremely difficult to imagine what it is like to not have the song hum in your head very very difficult and that now you generalize once you know a technology area it's very very difficult to imagine somebody who doesn't know that area so once you have some knowledge it's extremely hard to imagine uh, what it is like not to have the knowledge and that makes it the communication very hard because you don't know you can't imagine the state of mind you've you already cursed with knowledge yeah so this is called the curse of knowledge and then some people played around with this around have some people had a uh, there's a website which says okay if you've done mba then you get negative three points for you know your pitching ability if you're a lawyer then minus five they don't even have phd there you know so basically your ability to sort of pitch journalist will have some you know better points 
so uh, the point i think is that if as you specialize um, you are you are cursed with knowledge and you have to, it's good to be cognizant of that fact that you are cursed with knowledge yeah okay so what do you do so there are these few things that we want to see okay one is called curiosity the other is called concreteness and the third is called credibility these are the three key challenges for a presenter to a investor or anybody you want to make them curious otherwise they are switched off you want to make things little concrete make sure demo and third thing is if build some credibility so we'll see three videos and each video we will build a template which you might find useful okay so the first video is um, uh, this iPod presentation it's a little long eight nine minutes uh, Steve Jobs first iPod presentation and we will build a template from that so my request to you is just note down how many times he will ask a question for example it begins and immediately he'll ask a question why music and he'll go blah 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 okay just whenever he asks a question just see note down so that we'll just see how many times he asks such a question the, the field that we decided to do it in the choice we made was music now why music well we love music and it's always good to do something you love more importantly music's a part of everyone's life everyone music's been around forever it will always be around this is not a speculative market and because it's a part of everyone's life it's a very large target market all around the world it knows no boundaries but interestingly enough in this whole new digital music revolution there is no market leader there are small companies like creative and sonic blue and then there's some large companies like Sony that haven't had a hit yet they haven't found the recipe no one has really found the recipe yet for digital music and we think not only can we find the recipe but we think the Apple brand is going to be fantastic because people trust the Apple brand to get their great digital electronics from so let's look at portable music let's look at the landscape the first thing if you want to listen to music portably you can go out and buy a CD, uh, CD player right that's one way to go about 15 10 to 15 songs or you can buy a flash player go out and buy one of those you can buy a mp3 CD player or you can buy a hard disk based jukebox player these are the four choices for portable music right now so let's take a look at each one of those a CD player costs about $75 holds 10 to 15 songs on a CD that's about five dollars a song you can go buy a flash player pay about double that about hundred fifty dollars holds the same 10 to 15 songs or about ten dollars a song you can go buy an mp3 CD player and an mp3 CD uh, which you can burn on your computer cost about hundred fifty dollars but holds hundred and fifty songs you get down to a dollar a song or you can go buy a hard drive jukebox player for about three hundred dollars it holds about a thousand songs and cost about thirty cents a song so we looked at this and studied all these and that's where we want to be that is where we want to be just note down this table okay I feel this table is a very very good uh, metaphor for how you can present your options see one way to present to say look my solution is the only solution for this problem in the world okay that's one way to say not a very credible way to say things to say look there are other options available like he said there are these four things each one has some pros and cons or whatever and here is what my suggestion why this solution is better yeah so it's a if you can build a table like this for your um, idea it's 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 going to be useful for building credibility okay yeah we'll come back to the template but just to highlight that part and we are introducing a product today that takes us exactly there and that product is called iPod iMac iBook iPod what is iPod iPod is an mp3 music player has CD quality music and it plays all of the popular open formats of digital music mp3 mp3 variable bitrate uh, WAV and AIFF but the biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs 
Now, this is a quantum leap because it's your, for most people, it's their entire music library. This is huge. How many times have you gone on the road with a CD player and said, oh God, the CD, I didn't bring the CD I wanted to listen to. To have your whole music library with you at all times is a quantum leap in listening to music. But the coolest thing about iPod is that whole, your entire music library fits in your pocket. Okay? You can take your whole music library with you right in your pocket. Never before possible. So that's iPod. There are three major breakthroughs in iPod. Let's take a look at each one of them. The first one is it's ultra portable. So if we're going to keep a thousand songs on iPod and it fits in your pocket, how, how do we do this? How do we possibly do this? Well, we start off with an ultra thin hard drive. We've got a 1.8 inch diameter hard drive that's 0 0.2 inches thick, super thin. And that hard drive is five gigabytes in capacity. Five gigabytes, which holds a thousand songs at a 160 kilobit rate, which is a very high quality rate of MP3 compression. Very high quality. A thousand songs on this five gigabyte drive. And we've built in 20 minute skip protection. That's not, tw that's not 20 seconds, 20 minute skip protection. So you can take iPod bicycling, mountain climbing, jogging, you name it, and you're not going to skip a beat. So we've got this five gigabyte drive that holds a thousand songs. How do we get the thousand songs on to iPod? We don't want to wait. So we've built in Firewire. Now, Apple, as you know, invented Firewire. We should Firewire on every computer we make. It's built into iPod. It's the first and only music player with Firewire. Why? Because it's fast. You can download an entire CD into iPod in five to 10 seconds. An entire CD. So let's take a look at how it compares with USB. Five to 10 seconds for Firewire to load a CD. On a USB player, you're talking five minutes. Let's talk about a thousand songs now. On iPod with Firewire, it is under 10 minutes. On a USB player, it is five hours. Can you imagine that? You get your USB player, you want to load a thousand songs, you get to watch it for five hours while it loads the songs. Under 10 minutes with iPod. It's 30 times faster than any other MP3 player. So, huge win. Now, it doesn't matter how many songs you have with you if your battery's dead, right? So we have built in an extraordinary battery into iPod. 10 hours of battery life, and that is 10 hours of continuous music. We're using a rechargeable lithium polymer battery. This is a more advanced battery than we even use in our portable computers. It's the most advanced battery we've ever shipped. And you can recharge this 10-hour battery in one hour to 80% of its capacity on a fast charge. One hour. But maybe the coolest thing is that, you know, FireWire, the FireWire cable carries all the data from the Mac to iPod, but FireWire also has power on it. And so when you plug in to your Mac, it actually charges the iPod over that single FireWire cable. So you don't have another charging cable to worry about. It charges over FireWire every time you plug into your Mac. Now you might say, well, what happens if I'm on the road with my iPod and I didn't bring my Mac with me and my battery's running low? What do I do? Well, we got a really cool charger that ships as part of iPod too. And this charger has a FireWire port on it. So you take your FireWire cable and just plug it right into the charger and plug it into the outlet and charge iPod wherever you happen to be where there's an outlet. So 10 hours of continuous music playback with a remarkable new battery technology. Now you might be saying, well, this is cool. This is cool, but you know, I've got a big hard disk in my, my portable, let's say my iBook. I'm running iTunes, I'm really happy. I got Firewire on my iBook. I don't quite get 10 hours of battery life, but iBook's got better, better battery life than any other consumer portable. So what's, what's so special about iPod here? It's ultra portable. An iBook is really portable, but this is ultra portable. <laughs> and let me show you what I mean. iPod is the size of a deck of cards. A deck of cards. It is two 
0.4 inches wide, it is 4 inches tall, and it is barely over 3 quarters of an inch thick. This is tiny. It also only weighs six and a half ounces. That is lighter than most of the cell phones you have in your pockets right now. So this is what's so remarkable about iPod. It is ultra portable. We didn't stop there. iPod has got Apple design. We've got one of the best design teams in the world, and they have done a remarkable job. Uh, and let me show you. This is what iPod looks from the side. Again, about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to show you the back first because I'm in love with it. It's stainless steel. It's really, really durable. It's beautiful. And this is what the front of it looks like. Boom. That's iPod. I happen to have one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. <laughs> there it is, right there. So, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs, and it goes right in my pocket. So, before I show you, uh, wait, how many questions did any, any of you not, notice? Did he count? How many questions did he ask? Anybody notice? Three, four, five, six, seven, seven, yeah. Um, any, anything you find interesting, you found interesting before I say something about the template. What did you find? Anything you found interesting in this way of presentation? What was other than his, let's say, charismatic way and stuff? What do you think? No, nothing particularly. So, um, so we, there are at least nine, maybe there is, yeah, there are nine questions, okay, the, and that's like, you know, almost one question every minute on an average, yeah, and this way of presentation is, is called building a curiosity flow, which means before you open PowerPoint, you can build a curiosity flow first. What will be the set of questions you can ask to which? what you are going to say is the answer. This is a, this is one of the key design principles of a presentation. That is you build a design, you build a curiosity flow before you actually, uh, actually build the answers to that. Yeah. So that is one aspect of uh, this. Concreteness is about how you ma make people feel about your stuff and deck of cards is one example. Because you have all handled deck of cards, when you give that example it feels concrete than just saying that numbers, how many uh, centimeters or millimeters is the width and so on. Of course, demo is also what makes it, uh, you know, feel it. Um, so there are this, anything that people can go through as an experience is, is what is concrete. So, you know, innovation is abstract, iPod is concrete, soft is abstract, silk sari is concrete, on time delivery FedEx, 20 gram, one teaspoon. So things which people can experience are concrete, yeah. Um, okay, credibility, this this particular way is called, see you can build credibility by having a, let's say Shah Rukh Khan or a Deepika Padukone promote your product. That's one way to build credibility. That's very expensive. For most people that's not accessible. Even the experts in your field are not accessible. This is another way where you show options before solution. You show that look there are options, these are pros and cons and this is where our solution fits. Yeah, and these are, this is why. So this is one way to build credibility. Um, so this is one template that I am going to show you which is, has three aspects. First one is why, to say why music, because music is a large market and there is no big player there, single player and hence that's, some, that's what we want to get into. What is it? What is iPod? Take a look at the three things that it has and show how the whole thing fits into my pocket. That is a demo. And the tagline is entire music library fits into your pocket. It's also useful to have a tagline. Yeah. So there's three things. So any, any topic you take your project, you can ask this question, why? Why that? 
and you need to have some ways to say why this topic is important, why this challenge is important. Then you show your, tell what your solution is. This is what we offer to feel, you know, as a response to the challenge. And then you show actually a demo how it works. Is that okay? Yeah? Any questions on this? So, this is one simple way to, uh, the last template that we will have will be similar to this, just adding one more thing. So, we will we'll see this again. We will see one investor presentation of, uh, a two minute presentation to investors, real investors. Um, but any anything on this before we move to the next template? Any question? So, this is template number two, okay. Now, I am going to show you some data here. This is from a research uh, data and just take it for, uh, you know, take that this data is real, yeah, from developing countries. So, it shows that investment in girls and economic growth are linked, that is what the claim is, yeah. So, your job is to say that if you were to show this in a two minute presentation, how will you show? Yeah, so please read this and please give me ideas, let us say as an um, advertisement kind of thing, but you, you want to showcase this in two minute video, how will you show? Any, any thoughts, how will you show? Be creative, how will you, what will you, what will you show? Let us say if you were to make a before and after, you remember before and after storyboard that you made like a hair oil story. Suppose you were to do a before and after, what will you do? I am giving some hints. Girls, please. Nothing? You do not have idea? How will you show? Could you have yeah? some, some ideas? Could be any? Come on. Now we will not go to the next until we have at least one or two ideas from you. Yes, sir. Sorry, so let me understand. You are saying there are two different uh, girls that you are going to show? Yeah. In the dream you are saying, yeah. okay. Yes. And that she is actually not going to school. Yeah. So, you are saying the dream shows what is possible yeah. and uh, the reality shows that it is, it is not actually so and its repercussions. Uh, maybe, okay, that is one thought definitely. Uh, it may not link, it is not linking, only part it is not linking is maybe the invest, economic growth. Yeah, it shows maybe that you know you are going to be worse off, uh, but not very clear how that links to the economic growth. Yeah, but that's a good start. Any other, any other idea? Yes, sir. Okay, two parallel stories now you have. Okay. Okay, and the other one is getting. Okay, they both both meet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's also thought. Again, it, you know, it has is building on to what he's saying. Um, of course, it's still not bringing in the economic growth angle. Oh, you are saying one girl is prospered, kind of thing you are going to show, but that's family being prospering. It's not clear how that grows the economic economy in a country, right? Yeah, but yes, good start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. You are going to show all stats and stuff. That is it, end of the story or? And then? Okay, now you will show, okay, now this is really a scenario and now let us the change scenario where you are going to show, okay. All right, that is 
that is possible yes so be concrete so what will you show actually so now your your documentary starts what will i see first okay how will you show that And so will you show a village? Yeah. Okay, and then what will you show happening in that village? Uh, people discussing that, uh, why do they uh, People discussing is what you will show. Yeah. Okay. And then we can show the stats that, uh, Okay, you will show the statistics after that. Fair enough. After that? Okay, you will just show something and then stats. Okay, you will show discussion then stats, discussion stats, kind of, okay, any other, okay, that's, I mean all these are ideas, yeah, who knows, any other, any other idea, there is nothing, we have not got anything from girls yet, huh? <laughs> come on, guy. You know? something from your side, how will you show, no? Okay, so I'll show you. So what I'm going to show you is a two-minute clip. It's a very fast clip. Okay, um, some of the ideas which we have got has are you'll see reflected there, and then we'll maybe discuss for a few minutes what it is like. Yeah. So it's going to. Sh it's basically trying to show the same thing in a very in two minutes time. Yeah. How did you find it? What anything interesting you found? How was it? Anything was good, not good? Good. What 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 did you find good about it? Declare the goodness. Not good. Okay. What did you not find good about it? This text was not a uh, good way. This is not visual, so it's that you are saying the non-visual part is okay. So you are saying it would have been better to have visuals instead of this. 
okay but the but the design of the story itself that the way they went about was the, was that useful or not you need okay now who said good what was if you had to say good tell us something okay and b that you found interesting that you found okay but anybody else no, I mean I, there is nothing you know universally good or what you like is what you will use probably these are different tools I am showing. So, I am just going to show one template which is based on this uh, this girl effect video. Um, um, so, this is uh, the template goes like this right you you depict an individual in the current scenario right suppose you are trying to make a smart hostel room then you will pick one student concrete student give him a name and say look this is what his day in a life looks like in the hostel crammed room and whatever right. So, you are going to walk through the kind of pain he goes through and then uh, present the scenario now imagine you can fix the picture right uh, this is the same how then you provide show your solution this is what a smart mood room might look like yeah if it is energy saving this is what it might be or seniors and then present the change scenario and its benefit. And now you say now multiply this by so many students in the campus or if it has to go to multiple campuses there are so many students living in so many campuses right. So, now you multiply. So, um, and then you have to give a tagline right the tagline here was uh, invest in a girl and she will do the rest right. So, this is one template which means you start from one concrete scenario show how the whole pain area of that person. Then you say now imagine you can fix that picture and actually show the fixed picture and then you say you the multiplier effect is important because that is giving you the market size right I mean that is you are saying look I mean I showed you one, but there are so many of these people who are facing the same pain area today who can be who can be benefited yeah. So, that is another option for you when you make a pitch for your but you can also make a skit which is to act yeah you can have a act one showing the pain area and you say look now ok now imagine how this can be fixed and you show your solution in act two. So, it is a two act skit which can happen again in a very short time. So, that is another opportunity for you for presentations if you are interested you can do that as well yeah any questions on this template. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now we I'll show you the last template, template number three. Okay. So this is um, Dragons Den is a reality show. Um, it was in UK, and uh, there are real investors sitting there, and people come and uh, startups present pitch their uh, idea, and they either put money or don't put money. Now, what is I found interesting about the thing which I am going to show you is that their start to end of their presentation is less than 2 minutes, less than 2 minutes finishes maybe we will and then they ask questions we will look at couple of questions you can watch the entire video on YouTube and then I will show you the template from that as well yeah it is a technology idea that they have. Um, the company is called Wand company I think the company very well exists this is 2008 or 9. But this company is uh, very much there, I think. Two entrepreneurs whose solid business plan caught the interest of all five dragons back in 2010 were Richard Blakesley and Chris Bernardo. Although it didn't harm that their product was pretty impressive as well. Hi, we're the Wand Company, and we're here today to ask for £200,000 investment for a 10% stake in our company. Arthur C. Clarke is famous for having said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And the magic market, fantasy market is huge. And we thought that Richard and I would get together and make some really magical products. Our first one is a real magic wand. I thought the magic wand guys were possibly the best I've ever seen on Dragon's Den. With this wand I can, for example, play some music. I can rotate it to turn the volume up, I can give it a flick to change tracks, stop the music, 
In fact, you can control almost anything in your house. Fantastic, man. Everyone wants to zap. You know what I mean? Zap someone, you know? Well, I can turn on the TV. Dad, 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 dad. Rewind, pause. Da -da 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 -da. Or even things like lighting. Fair play. That was, a, that was a really good demo. We started the company last year, and by Christmas we'd sold over 10,000 units. But we feel that with your help, investment and expertise, we could take the one company to a revenue of about £18 million within three years. A good product rarely gains investment without a realistic business plan. And Theo Pafitis was keen to hear the duo's sales targets and how they were going to achieve them. How many do you really believe you can sell? Is your term calendar year? Have you got a financial year? We we're projecting conservatively £1.2 million pounds for this year. How much net profit are you going to make out of 1.2 million? 50 percent, 0.6 million. So that's two minutes and they, the, the whole thing started after 40 seconds. They were coming up the stairs. Yeah, in less than two minutes they have finished their presentation. Okay, uh, let's look at a couple of questions that the guys asked them. 600,000 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. What makes you think that you require my 200,000 pounds? We don't, we, don't, we don't need the cash to make this worst case forecast we're talking about. But we're saying within your investment, we think we can do, say, three million pounds. Well, the worst case is 1.2 million. Yeah. We're just concluding a deal with Target in the US. And one of our distributors wants to put the product into SkyMail. The Apple Union's coming. Oh, the Apple Union's coming. Okay. Yeah, so SkyMail, for example, it's a magazine in the back of the seat of every US internal flight, pretty much at 600 million people a year, sit in front of that. With ambitious targets, but more importantly, a clear strategy of how to meet them, Duncan Bannatyne was sold on both the duo and their business plan. I'm going to make you an offer for all the money, the £200,000, but I want not 10%, but 30% of the company. If you make £600,000 profit, I'll give you 10% of the equity back. Is that a deal then? Can we ask if anyone else is interested to? You can if you want to, but you'll be wasting your time. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to offer you the full amount of money for 25% of the equity. With the confidence that comes from having two offers already on the table, the duo even set their own targets when it came to the negotiation. What offer would you like from me that would make you happy? 20% going down to, say, 10 if we make 1.2 net profit. Does that work for you? That would work. I don't think we were really playing off against each other. We just wanted to understand what the range of deals available to us were, were going to be. Obviously, it's a consumer retail product. I don't know everything about all of your businesses, but my impression is that Theo and Peter have got the strongest connections in that market. You'd be wrong to assess that. OK. Do the other have more connections than me? Can either of you... Move it all on your offers then. So you can watch this. They basically made offers to these guys. Um, so before I show a template, uh, again, let me just ask what did you find? Anything in in interesting about the presentation that you found? Anything that you found interesting? This is the third presentation we have seen. Anything you found? The pitch itself. Any observations? No? Okay. So uh, let me show you this. It's very similar to the Steve Jobs, uh, but one more thing, okay. So, so first is why. So they said, look, the magic market is big. There are so many guys who buy, spend uh, billions of pounds on magic, uh, magical products. Um, what is that our first product is a magical wand? And they actually show a demo. Bulk of their time is really... Um, actually the one doing the demo yeah and the last part I have added one more so the first three things are common the same things which were there in the Steve Jobs template which is why why music what is iPod and here is how it works and the last is how much which means if somebody is really interested um, they'll ask how much and I've seen Sometimes people are not ready, okay. I've seen presentations where the guy who's listening gets interested um, and he asks, okay, how much do you need now? And you need to have some answer. 
you need to have answer backed by some um, some costing and stuff also saying look I, my next milestone you can't say look fund me for forever types right nobody is going to do it okay my next milestone is six months we will do this uske liye give us so much that's what the thing is you have to ask with some reasonable understanding of what your next milestone is so this is why what um, how and how much yeah anything any any questions so let's do then why you know then why don't we spend some time there are some of the books which i'll show but why don't you guys spend some time and make some presentations here using this templates either one of these one of the three just spend next 10 minutes make a 2 minute pitch and come and pitch so we had why what how was one the girl effect was another which means you take a concrete example of a guy and his pain area that you are addressing yeah and say this is how you're going to fix the picture and narrate the picture that is fixed and then multiplier effect of 600 million girls there but maybe something else in your case just spend a few minutes let's see what happens is that okay just let's do this exercise and let's see what happens okay thoda kaam karo thoda so you're working on your idea right you take your project make a pitch just to practice practice stuff that's okay up up somebody come aa jao one group start then we'll have few more groups come aa jao hi so we are we are team smart lightnings so in this world everything is smart everything is been updated except the lights everything mobiles laptops pcs everything except the lightning switchboards so our project is simply simply to upgrade our lightning methods to switch or switch on or off the lights so so our idea is uh, simply if you want if you are if we are in hurry we forget to switch off the lights and it will raise our electricity bills and much so or we we have a device which will which is sensor so whenever whenever one exits a room the lightning will automatically uh, switch off and we have a remote control which we can use to switch on or off the lights and other electric equipments mm. uh, so here's a demo so if i enter the room suppose he is a sensor so he switches on the light and if i exit the room the sensor will automatically sense and switch off the lights thanks for that try so a couple of suggestions on this one is um, you uh, your uh, girl effect template might be useful here you can actually start with one student give him a name and then show that you know he doesn't switch off and you know so this what is what happens because of this so whose pain is it maybe it's the pain of the admin who is paying the bill for the student and so on yeah and then one of the important aspect that is uh, missed out is the multiplier effect which means how big is how many people are impacted by this how many students do we want to multiply this by or is it not it is it just about students or it's about even larger population i don't know you have to do that uh, work yeah and if you want to show the demo of entering and exit you actually walk out you show it you you show that you are entering that guy switch on that light and you walk out so it it will be having little more effect yeah but thanks for trying that next we'll want to try come on you want to come not ready okay who else you guys are ready aa jao nahi i kya sound nothing not even a one template who else we want at least two couple of more come on you guys come yeah 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 aa jao uh hello okay uh, so basically what we want to do is we'll make like a small video type thing like the girl effect thing 
and so first we'll show just the story of one guy like we'll give him a name and we'll show him that he's come here and he wants to learn something but he doesn't know how to go and where to go so then he uses a product he comes to know and then you know he learns a new skill or he has fun doing it and all so then we zoom out and we see on a whole institute level and there we see that there are so many people just like him who have a lot of talent out here but but don't know how to you know sorry so basically there's a lot of talent but it's not channelized so you can give it a direction you can train it you can nurture it and then overall if the whole talent like that is properly channelized on an institute level it can you know give a much more basically it can cause a lot of growth something like that any suggestions for him as to what how we can improve so i think it's a good good start i think the crux here may lie in uh, showing the impact of the learning knowledge okay so maybe he he's uh, that skill that he acquires right um for it to be interesting what happens with that skill so maybe uh, you are getting a better job or you are getting something right maybe you are able to do better research yeah so institute like this will have different ways in which you would value the learning right i think that if you can bring that out in more concrete way uh i mean why would students you just imagine you know you are presenting this to students and saying look we are building this for you why would they get interested something you may have to just make it a little more concrete what might excite them oh are you giving us something like this i'm interested you know that's the kind of thing so make it a little more concrete as to what would um get people like you interested in hey when are you getting that prototype out right that may be uh, just think about that aspect but otherwise it's a good good way to present any other one more at least come come please so hi so assume you are uh, all alone uh, late at night you you just you are hungry and you are going to canteen and just forgot your uh, wallet at your uh, room or some somewhere so uh, after eating you realize you don't have money and the canteen uh, canteen vendor already have a credit of around 2000 rupees on you so he is not letting you uh, more uh, to uh, to just let you go and pay afterwards so here here is my product the biometric payment machine you just go and uh, pay with your fingertip and uh, the payment is done so for uh, demo this room me a random guy and you are the uh, canteen vendor and uh, the uh, machine is here and just i just put my finger and uh, the payment is up so that's that's a good start as well see some of these technology products right um, you might want to think about how you will actually show a demo one way could be um, you have a dummy kind of thing you will build a paper prototype or something another way could be if you have something where you are uh, using a sensor or whatever you know uh, because you may have to see, see uh, also go back and see the uh none of you have so far looked at that steve jobs table that we talked about that table may be also important to have he showed different options that exist and how they on different parameters they have merits and demerits and here is my solution that may be useful yeah so that may be uh, something you may want to look at because don't just present your idea out of the blue as if nothing else exists in the market show some alternatives to what you have and on the web if you can get their costing or something just give some idea look this is what cost and maybe i can i'm i'm planning to build something which is much cheaper and so on okay so that is something uh, it will be good to look at and see for i don't know uh, for some of you at least if it's possible to show some technology stuff that may be also very very effective anybody else you want to go any other so um um to so my okay one of the another uh, possibility you may want to look at is see all of us have smartphones with smartphones you can actually build a a video as well it can be a crude video it doesn't have to be sophisticated video
but a video is also a possibility all these some of the ideas that you said you know i'll go out and light will switch off or you can actually video record in your hostel as well so consider that as a possibility of your uh, presentation um, before and after scenario that you can make a you can use movie, windows movie maker and you know just not very difficult just think as that also as an option because sometimes video can be effective also where you will act and so on yeah you have any inputs on huh? i don't know you are is a marketing <laughs> boss so no huh? yeah um all right so uh, any uh, so we going to stop otherwise uh, anything for tomorrow's this thing my suggestion is um tell the experiments what you've done that's very crucial okay this whole whole thing about experiments or prototypes that you do and get feedback is very and if all of these are failure that's no problem that still carries that's important because you went and you asked somebody so if you not please please my suggestion is to carry out some validations of your assumptions look this is my assumption behind my idea went and tried this either worked or didn't work yeah so that's uh, any any question from your side before we close so i just want to give you a couple of uh, uh, thing on this the books that i referred here uh, this first book made to stick is my favorite book on this topic um i mean personally it benefited me a lot i was i used to be when i started out making presentations in a very very engineering style over a period i learned that's not very effective made to stick brings out that point from a design aspect how would you design your uh, pitch or presentation or how do you communicate your idea effectively very nicely written chip and dan heath uh, tipping point in another from gladwell and third is anatomy of but the first one is what i would if you get a chance i would say check it out thank you